So we are here with Joanne Lyon, General Superintendent of the Wesleyan Church. And Joanne, we're so thankful Thank to have you, you with us today. Great to be here. Really wonderful. So uh, I understand that you are the first female General, general Superintendent of the Wesleyan Church. That's correct. Um, you know, the Wesleyan Church ordained the first woman to be ordained in the United States. The founder of the Wesleyan Methodist Church, Luther Lee, ordained Antoinette Brown in 1853. Mm. Uh, so we've always carried that great legacy uh, and been very proud of it. But uh, we somehow took us a while to get around to um, some of the other parts of the Church of Leadership of Women. So I'm deeply honored to have been elected to this yeah. position. So Joanne, why would you say that you are personally a Wesleyan? Can you tell us that story? I sure can. I am a Wesleyan on many, for many reasons. Not only, I, obviously I was raised that, but that is not a good answer at all. I'm a Wesleyan because I believe in God's prevenient grace. He never gives up and he is, his grace is always out there working. Second reason why I'm a Wesleyan is because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we are filled with the love of God that is greater than any human love that can be uh, understood. And that comes by being filled with the Spirit, yeah. infused with love, as Joe Dangel says so well. Uh, and, uh, and then that love pushes out sin. <laughs> mm -hmm. Joanne, how is the gospel good news not only to people in the church, but good news to the entire world? Oh, it is, it is hope. It is the only hope we have in the world. Uh, and it is hope because it is about a transforming a person's life, which then, in, inwardly, but then it transforms it outwardly. And it, be, it transforms uh, communities, it transforms systems, it comes up against evil. It is what Paul says, we overcome evil with good. And it is God that we overcome evil with. Uh, so it is the best news. And I believe throughout the world, no matter people's religion, that they have been schooled in, it is the gospel of Jesus Christ that, it, that people are hungry for. Yeah. I've seen that over and over, over. So I understand in 1996, you founded an organization called World Hope International. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And, uh, and tell me about what led you in, into that, that desire to start something like well, that. Well, I had been involved in, for many, many years in, uh, uh, for example, in the, in the urban area of Kansas City, Missouri, uh, with uh, racial reconciliation, with jobs, working with jobs, all of this. In, in a secular way, for secular money. However, I was doing it out of my faith. Uh, and then a, a, a really critical moment came in my life in 1985 when I was invited to go with an ABC News team to film a documentary on the famine in Ethiopia. Mm. And while I was there, the thing that struck me, Mark, was that there, when you look at, at these things through, like through the eyes of ABC, not through missions, there were really very few Christians there. And I kept thinking, where are the believers in this place? Uh, I guess we're all home praying for parking places instead of for people who are dying for uh, lack of food and the famine. So I came back really burdened by that, that God's people needed to be out there, needed to be responding to the world and the crises in the world. You know, we've been called to bring people to Jesus, but we also care about the quality of life that happens mm -hmm. after that. God's called us to that as well. And so it comes, it, it really comes together. So that became a crisis moment in my life. And then many other experiences that I had during that. And I then, of course, I'm with the Wesleyan Church. So I felt called to start World Hope International, come alongside the Wesleyan Church uh, and others as well. Uh, and so that was really the reason. Started in a bedroom with a computer, a desk, and me in a parsonage in Warrenton, Missouri. Doesn't get more simple and unknown than that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but God, I immediately, I'll never forget uh, my husband. We had two kids still in college at, at Houghton College. And um, my husband called me one day and said, now, you know, you, you worked before and you had, when do you get your last paycheck? You know, kind of like, we're going to figure this out. God's going to do it, but we're going to figure it out. And my last paycheck came on January 20th. I met with a man and his daughter on January the 21st just to see if they were interested in this kind of thing. Had no idea. He'd never been interested in this type of ministry with the poor. Uh, and sitting there, he said, wow, do you have a budget for this? 
And I did. I like to go back to Habakkuk where God, he had the, Habakkuk had the vision, chapter one. Chapter two, God said, write it down. Mm -hmm. And I pulled out of my, my little briefcase I had the budget. The budget was real slim on income. The expenses were there. He looked at the whole thing and his daughter, and they both started crying. He said, we'll pick up the whole thing. So wow. they funded the first year of operations, and that was really the leap that got us forward. And, yeah. you know, God it, it came through literally every time I give him many, many stories of what all God did. Yeah. But God cares about uh, the poor of the world and, and for their soul, for their life, and for their transformation.